Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. As Nelson Mandela says, education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Today's show is all, is all, is all, about, all about, about education, about knowledge, metaphysics, spirituality, and the crystal skulls. Today is Wisdom Wednesday, June 8, 2016, and this is Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. I am your co-host, Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, kicking back here in Seattle, Washington. And if you're open to explore and discover through body, mind, and spirit, please visit me at marklanehart.com. You can do an internet search for the intuitive prospector. You can also find me at Best American Psychics or Best Psychic Directory. And let's do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual gold. My first Forest Friday is this Friday. It's a hike where we're going to get up in the mountains. I'm going to be doing this uh, uh, throughout the summer every Friday. And we're going to be calling that Forest Fridays. That's going to be on June 10th. And we're heading out to, uh, it's a great name, it's called Dirty Harry's Balcony. It's a six-mile hike up into the mountains. Uh, and then on Sunday, June 10th, I will be in Spokane, Washington uh, for my Spiritual Borders Workshop. I would love to work with you on metaphysics, spirituality, mediumship. Or if you want to go on a hike, look me up at marklanehart.com and let's get out in nature, which is our greatest teacher. Joining me today and every Wednesday is the beautiful and talented Kim Falcon, founder of Love First in Encino, California. Hi, Kim. How you doing today? Hi, Mark. Oh, you just made me smile. Thank you so much. That's the first smile I think I've had today. So <laughs> that is nice. Thank you. And, I, you know, I tell you what, just listening to you talk about your hikes up in nature, I sure wish I lived close enough to do that with you. And for those of you who are out in Seattle, boy, don't miss out on that opportunity. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And isn't it a cool name? It's called Dirty Harry's Balcony. How cool is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can only imagine. But yeah, it sounds like you're going to have a, a great time. Um, as Mark said, I'm Kim Falcon, founder of Love First, where life transformations happen in Encino, California. And of course, if there's anything that I can do to support you on your path in the way of readings, healings, or hypnotherapy, or just looking to further your spiritual development. I've been getting a lot more of those people coming to me, Mark, people mm -hmm. that aren't looking for predictions, but no. looking to enhance their spiritual development. It's like, it's, it's always so nice to get those calls, you know? So if you're one of those people out there that are looking to do that for yourself, I would love to hear from you. And you can find me at lovefirst.info. And Kim, for the for our inspired listeners out there all around the world as part of our inspired community, how can they interact with the show? How can they find us out on social media? And what's our positive affirmation for the month of June? Well, you can find us on social media across platforms uh, on Facebook under Inspired Living Radio, on Twitter and Instagram under Inspired for Us, and Google Plus under Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. And we are uh, active on social media. So if there is a question that you have for us or one of our lovely guests, we would love to bring those questions to air or you simply have a question for Mark or myself, we'd love to connect with you. And this is 
this is the way that you can do it on social media. You can also find us on our archive. So every live show moves to a podcast that you can listen to on demand um, across platforms like Podbean, SoundCloud, MarkLaneHart.com, YouTube, iTunes, and also on Ohm Times Radio archives. So there's all kinds of ways that you know, we, you know, stay connected with our audience and our community. And we just appreciate you guys so much. And we thank you for being here every Wednesdays with us. And Mark, since you did the inspired uh, affirmation last week, that was that was yours. It was around happiness. I'll, I'll let you uh, share that again with our audience. You bet. So happiness is a choice that I, ch- I choose my happiness on my own accomplishments and the blessings I've been giving. So happiness is a choice. And that's really the positive affirmation is choosing happy, choosing to be happy and knowing that it is a choice. And that is the positive affirmation for the month of June. I love it. So real quick, we're going to bring on our special guest because we're going to be talking about the Crystal Skulls today. Uh, The Crystal Skull Tour is actually coming to Seattle, Washington, and is going to be all around the Seattle area. So I thought it would be great to uh, have Joshua Shapiro on the show talking about what are Crystal Skulls, what is the background. Uh, Some of us know the Crystal Skulls from the last Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. So hopefully we'll talk about how that was uh, brought to, um, you know, the story and the history of that brought to Hollywood. And um, just read a little bit about Joshua's background. And and he's been studying this for, I think he said, 30-some years. But he is, uh, Joshua Shapiro, along with his divine life partner, Katrina, are known as the Crystal Skull Explorers. Uh, This is the title that Joshua felt inspired to give to the both of them to explain what is their work with the Crystal Skulls, which is to be explorers and teachers and share the best information that has been collected with the general public. Uh, They do have over 20 Crystal Skulls of various sizes, most likely modern made, but some special ones. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit later in the show to actually go into their names and where they come from and let Joshua talk about that. But Joshua is also an author of various books, including Journeys of the Aquarian Age Networker, UFOs, Space Brothers, and the Aquarian Age, Mysteries of the Crystal Skulls, and then in 1989, most recently, travel logbooks about two trips to Mexico, one in 2009, and another about searching for the Blue Skull in Peru. Currently, he's working with two novelists to create two different stories, both which show scenarios how world peace could happen in the near future. And I think we're all looking for a little bit of world peace in this chaotic world of ours. Joshua has been on a quest on numerous radio shows as well as hosted a few of his own. He has done hundreds of Crystal Skull talks in the U.S., Canada, Brazil, Peru, throughout various countries in Europe and in Australia. That's a, I want that job. I want to be able to go around the world and talk about what you love doing. That's a secret of life. Uh, he's been featured on a number of documentaries about the Crystal Skulls. I, I uh, went to YouTube and checked a couple of those out, so head on over to YouTube and check those out. Those are fascinating. And in 2009, uh, he and Katrina started, started a series of world peace meditation with the Crystal Skulls, which is done each month on the 13th day at the 13th hour, and they are supporting Crystal Skull World Day for the third year to bring all Crystal Skull Guardians together to do a meditation for world peace. So the 13th is right around the corner. So Joshua, let's bring you on to Inspire Living with Mark and Kim. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mark and Kim. Pleasure to be here. Heard a great deal about your show, how fabulous it is. Oh, well, thank you so much. We, we work hard to have fun and inspire people, and uh, we call it Wisdom Wednesday just to talk about all sorts of different subjects. And today, uh, I'm fascinated with this subject because I saw the movie Indiana Jones. I've known a little bit about the history of the, the Crystal Skulls, but let's uh, have you just introduce yourself and talk about the work that you're doing. Did it, was it 30 years or 33 years you've been studying this In 1983 in San Jose, California, I had a chance to meet an eight-pound amethyst crystal skull, and I had a very profound experience with it. And basically, the message I received is we, meaning the crystal skulls, the living consciousness connected with them, Mm -hmm. are returning to the public's eye in order to help humanity to create world peace. So now that you know, what are you going to do about it, Joshua? Well, (laughs) obviously, here I am 33 years later still doing it. 
and just trying to share, uh, you know, the best information that we come up with in every conceivable form, you know, whether it's uh, uh, novels now or, you know, f uh, nonfiction books, um, uh, interviews, uh, public talks. We do private sessions with our crystal skulls. And as you mentioned, we're bringing in the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull, which is the most famous one here to the Seattle area, which will be here in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's going to kick off here, just got the tour dates. It's going to be kicking off on June 24th through the 25th up in Arlington. And now is that up at the, uh, Path to Avalon? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's give an inspired shout-out to our friend Shelly up in Arlington at a Path to Avalon. Hopefully she's listening to today's show, but just wanted to give her a shout-out. And then June 26th through July 1st, you're going to be in Tacoma. Yeah, Ju Tacoma June on the 26th, 28th is Bellevue Unity Church, 29th in Marysville, 30th in Everett, and then July 3rd will be at East West Books. Oh, perfect. And, and I've got – I've got July 2nd in Bellingham. Is that still on as well? Oh, yeah. There, it's going to be a full house in Bellingham. We've yeah. had a great response there. Perfect. Well, hopefully I can come out on July 3rd right before the uh, the holiday there and, and catch and sit in the presence of the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. So you're going to be talking about that, and you're going to be talking about the history. And, uh, you know, for people that don't know about the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull, and I want to talk about the other uh, – 20 crystal skulls that you have as well because you, sure. you have a background there. But we're going to be going to our first break here shortly in about a minute. But let's talk real quick about the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull because that's what the tour is really uh, hedged on. Right. Bill Holman is the guardian. He's based out of Indiana. I've been friends with him for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And uh, the Mitchell Hedges skull really is the one that has brought the attention to crystal skulls all over the world because it's a human size crystal skull two-piece it has a separate jaw and um, you know it's one of the world's greatest mysteries and uh, to be honest of all the hundreds or thousands of crystal skulls I've seen this is the one that has affected me in the most powerful way so this is my joy and pleasure that Katrina and I have bringing Mr. Holman here with the Mitchell Hedges skull for the experience people are going to have it's going to be amazing this sounds very interesting. So that's the cue for our first break coming up. Uh, stick with us. We're going to talk more in depth about the crystal skulls with our special guest, Joshua Shapira, here on Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. We'll be back in two minutes. Stick around. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Om Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window 
and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Irreverent Therapist Show. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, everyone, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. Today's special guest, Joshua Shapiro, Shapiro, talking all about the Crystal Skulls, the tour that's coming through the Seattle area, the Pacific Northwest here. And before we went to the break, Joshua, I wanted to get into, you have 20, 20 Crystal Skulls of various sizes, and, and you said most likely, you know, most are modern made, but some... Some are very special to you and have a background and a history, and I just wanted you to kind of introduce some of your favorite skulls that you have in your collection and why they're so important to you and how you found them. Okay. Well, first of all, if any of your listeners decide to come out for the tour, we're going to have them all there uh, at these public uh, meetings, so they'll get a chance to meet some of the skulls. Um, The one I want to talk about first is called Portal de Luz, which is Portal of Light in in English, but that name is in Portuguese. Although he's made by a master carver in Brazil, which means he would be a contemporary skull, what the listeners need to understand is that what I found, and this is the only way that I can explain it, is as the crystal skulls find what I call their true guardians – There is a living consciousness that seems to be connected with the skulls because a lot of times with Portal de Luz, he'll be like communicating with me telepathically, whether he's close to me or I'm at a great distance from him. I'll start to receive like messages which come in my thinking mind. So I I have to think that that the consciousness that's working through him is probably because my affinity is uh, very much for other dimensions and UFOs and things of this nature, is probably coming from either ETs or other dimensional consciousness. And the other thing that we have to understand about these crystal skulls is uh, most of them which we have are made out of quartz crystal. And the quartz crystal that are selected by the modern carvers to make these skulls, who knows how old those pieces of quartz could be. They could be millions of years old. And I think that quartz crystal kind of records the frequency of energy and records history of things that are happening around it. Mm -hmm. But we do have a couple of of crystal skulls that are kind of unique. Uh, We have one called Tachula, which actually – is uh, we're not sure uh, the history. This is a problem with crystal skulls. You know, if it comes through, let's say, one of the indigenous um, cultures that may be guardians of them and have them, they may know something like some crystal skulls the minds have, if they will talk about it. They have some idea and feeling of their history. But for the most part, we don't know the history. So a lot of times when we're speaking about crystal skulls, we have to talk about the energy that they're emanating and what people are feeling. So Katrina, who's close to Tachula, we met this skull in Sedona. It was part of about 40 or 50 skulls that were uh, dug out of uh, Mongolia. They were building a dam, and as they went into the ground, they discovered this cache of crystal skulls. Now, Tachula is not looking like a modern skull. It's a stylized skull. It's kind of um, smaller, maybe three or four pounds. But the, the key thing is, is that it started talking to Katrina and it told her that it was a Mayan crystal skull. So I think this is the one we have, which is the oldest. And the strange thing that happened to us is last year we were at a fair, actually with one of our partners for the tour, uh, and they did this uh, fair up in Bellingham. And a guy comes up to our booth and he says, your crystal skull looks so familiar, this Tachula skull. And he brought one that was almost exactly the same. So what, we, what I learned from that or what I intuitively heard is there could be a whole set of these skulls that look like this Tachula skull. Another skull we have is an apported skull, which is not really talked about very much. And some people don't even know what apported means, so I'll have to define it first. When people do these um, uh, sessions with mediums, 
some mediums are able to allow through their body or to create an uh, energy field around them in the room for the session for objects to appear that are seemingly coming from nowhere. Mm-hmm. Now, that, of course, is impossible. It has to be some spirit, some intelligence, which is sending these objects probably using the power of their mind to create them into our reality. So they're just kind of like showing up from out of nowhere. So we went to a a session with a medium, Michael Shane, who I believe has come back into this area now. Some people have heard of him in Seattle. And he had a crystal skull that came through an energy vortex in his mouth that popped out at this session along with other uh, jewels. And so this was a little tiny skull. Um, uh, unfortunately, I, I can't remember. Katrina, what uh, is the name of uh, our reported skull again? Krishna, and the material it's made from is opalite. So she came in just in time to rescue me because <laughs> I'm going to be 61 next year. And for some reason, at certain moments, I just I can't remember things. So this fire opalite skull comes out. And when it came out, its energy was extremely high. But I think now that it's been here in uh, the physical reality, so to speak, it's kind of settled down. But that's another interesting one. And then we have another skull made by Master Carver in China, which is a human-sized rose quartz skull. We call her Rosalita. Also has a movable jaw. It just emanates total, total love and a lot of healing. Um, so that's kind of an example of some of the different ones we have. But we have more than, than 20. They just kind of find us and they don't want to leave because a lot of times we help people find their own crystal skulls. But sometimes when the crystal skulls come here before we send them out, they don't want to leave. So it's very interesting. That is interesting. And as far as uh, like the gentleman that approached you at the um, the tour that you were doing that was similar to the crystal skull that you had – Mm-hmm. Did he say what area it came from? And you said you found a batch. So did you find like four? Did you find 15? Kind of explain that. Uh, no, I don't think that he actually knew the history of where the skull came from. And it's the only other one that we've seen. It's just when I saw the two of them together, I follow my intuition. And my intuition says, do you realize that there could be like 10 or 12 of these skulls? So I'm keep, we're keeping our eye open if we might meet other people who may have skulls that look like this. But it was very remarkable. All the unique features of Tachula were on the skull this other man had. And the other thing about Tachula is we, we think the front part is made from a frosted quartz, but the back part is kind of a ruby red color, mm-hmm. and we're still not sure what it is. You know, it's kind of like two different materials combined together. So we don't know how the skull was made or where it came from. But um, when I went to Australia, I, d- I went last year to Australia and kind of did a tour. That was the most popular crystal skull of the ones I brought for the Australians. So, mm, interesting. Um, Makes so, you wonder if it's from that area. Well, it could have a connection with – They don't like to be called the aboriginals, the Mm -hmm. original people. Mm -hmm. It may be possibly it has some energies from there. So Interesting. So on this tour, Joshua, how many crystal skulls are we talking at one time that are in one area? Are you talking about the tour with the Mitchell Hedges skull or are you talking about when I went to Australia? I'm sorry, the uh, Mitchell – the Mitchell Hedges crystal tour that's coming up here in Seattle. Um, Everybody that's part of that tour because you you have your crystal skulls that you bring – Is it just your collection and the Mitchell Hedges, or is there other people that bring all of their collection as well? So you have a bunch of crystal skulls uh, all in one area. Uh, The way that this tour is going to work is the focus is on the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull. Okay. And the reason why the focus is on this skull is because it's the most famous. It has Mm -hmm. a tremendous healing energy around it. And uh, we're very fortunate that Mr. Holman decided to come here because um, for the past couple of years, he's been kind of quiet. And now I think the skull is kind of urging him that it's time to share it with different people. Mm -hmm. But however, whenever such a crystal skull does show up in a place, indubitably, people like ourselves who have our own personal skulls, they're going to be bringing their skulls. So we have no idea how many crystal skulls in total will be each at these public presentations, which we briefly mentioned before. But the idea is is that when people come into the talk, the Mitchell Edges go be on a table in the front, 
and other people will be able to bring some of their personal crystals or crystal skulls to place around it because one of the things that the crystal skulls do is they share energy with other objects and with other skulls. So some of our personal crystal skulls, uh, three of them, in fact, have been with the Mitchell Hedges skull before, but there are other well-known so-called very old or ancient crystal skulls that some of our skulls have spent time with. And what I believe happens is that the skulls are like a, a, a totally harmonious family. If the listeners can understand that, they talk to each other, they share energy. Mm -hmm. And um, what will happen is they kind of know when a guardian comes with their skulls to see one of the very old ones, certain frequency of, of energies will be shared because then those skulls can go travel. So like, you know, our skulls will have a chance to spend time with the Mitchell Hedges skull, whatever energy it gives. And then when we're out there doing our work, people will have a chance if they've never seen that skull to get part of the energy of that. That's the reason why they share these frequencies. Hmm. But and the, Joshua, a quick question for you on this. How does the energy and the consciousness um, uh, get associated with these skulls to begin with? How, how how does that happen? Well, we don't really know the answer to that question. That's like the ten billion dollar question. Oh, okay. um, I think <laughs> I think that the way it works, and this is from my personal experience. So it's just a theory. It's just a feeling. It's going by soul memory. Is that um, like, for example, Portal de Luz was made by this Brazilian carver, and then I had a medium that sat with it when I had just received it. And she said that this crystal skull was waiting to meet me. So if that's true, it means the spirit or this living consciousness that's working through the skulls, they already know who's going to receive those skulls. And so usually what happens is if you have spirit guides or spirits that work with you, it's basically a harmonious relationship. Like, you know, each of us, we have our own gifts and talents and skills, what we do. And so that's a frequency of energy. And I think this consciousness is drawn to be with someone who's the guardian of this skull that has a similar frequency of energy so it's kind of like doing teamwork together and sharing this energy from spirit and sharing the energy as a person and sharing the energy as, as the skull and that's the only way I know how to describe it so it's going to be unique for every guardian it's going to be a different situation because each of us is a unique note in God's infinite symphony and if somebody were interested in in um having a skull for themselves, um, do you have to be mindful of where you get it from or does every, oh, that is that is our signal here. We are heading into our second break as we talk to Joshua Shapiro and our topic today, Crystal Skull. Stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you wondering what is really going on behind the news? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasqual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share on the Air Radio for thought provoking views behind the news, Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Om Times Radio. You can also find us on shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Check it out. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart. 
The Intuitive Prospector is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. And welcome back, inspired listeners. Thank you for being with us today and our special guest, Joshua Shapiro, as we talk about crystal skulls. But before we continue on with our conversation, I want to let our audience know that our show today on Inspired Living is sponsored by Career Bliss 2016 Workshop, which will be held on June 11th and 12th in Santa Monica, California. It is hosted by Mark Langford, who is a best-selling author and top 10 career coach, and it is going to be a fantastic event for those of you who are trying to figure out how to discover and transition to a full filling career and how important is that Um, but perhaps you're feeling stuck or uncertain of how to make this move this workshop will help you along with Mark Langford you will also have six expert career and business coaches to help support you in this process it is going to be a very, very good weekend. If you are interested in going, you can register now uh, at Career Bliss 2016 Workshop and enter in the code Inspired Living 100 to receive a hundred dollar discount. Joshua, thank you for being with us today on Inspired Living. And before we went to break, you were talking to us. Well, I was actually uh, asking you the question actually about people who are interested in having their own crystal skull, does every crystal skull have this energy or consciousness uh, attached to it? Or do you have to get it from a special place or be mindful of who it comes from? How does that process work? Well, I think, first of all, you do need to be mindful about where you're uh, getting the crystal skull from. Uh, Check out the the source. What we do for people who uh, receive their skulls from us is before they get their skull, Katrina does a very special um, energy work with them. Here in the Seattle area, we have many beautiful locations and we feel there's a really good organic energy here. So she has her special places she takes them to. Plus they also sit with our own crystal skulls who have traveled with me all over the world and they've picked up all kinds of energy. So it's the combination of the these energies that we give to the skull par to the guardian receiving it. So it is very important. As far as which one would somebody pick, sometimes people will see a crystal skull, let's say, on the Internet, or they'll see a picture of it, and they'll right away know that's the one that I need to have. Sometimes people aren't sure, so we'll ask them what type of gemstone or quartz would they like to have for it. But what we normally find is the crystal skulls pick us. We don't pick them. So, like, for example, we worked with this very special couple we know up in British Columbia. They sell many, many crystal skulls. And they gifted to us during a tour we did in 2011, like 200 skulls. And I thought, we're, we're never going to find the guardians for all of them. But we did. So I think, uh, personally, we've probably helped about... 
I don't know, over 500, 600, 700 people since I've been with Katrina in 2008 to find the, the right crystal skull. The reason why I think the crystal skulls are important is let's assume that they are a healing tool and let's assume we have people all over the world who, regardless whether they're participating in our world peace meditations or not, they're working with their crystal skull for healing energy and for a peaceful energy. This can be extremely powerful. And this is the reason why I think crystal skulls are finding people all over the world. It's like they're building their own little energy grid line or a geometric grid line that's helping Mother Earth to raise her frequency so that we can see a more peaceful Earth. Now, if any people are interested and would like our help to get their own crystal skulls, we have a very simple email that they can contact us at, which is just crystal skull explorers at gmail.com. Or if they have any questions about the show today, they can uh, just send us an email. Or we have a website, of course, too, which is at www.cse, which is like crystal skull explorers, that cse.crystalskullexplorers.com. We have a lot of information there. They can see some of the crystal skulls I'm talking about. We have some amazing articles on there, free ebook, free newsletter. So we're just trying to support the public with the best information we can about the crystal skulls. So, um, so Joshua, what if, if 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 you're interested in, in working with a crystal skull, do you have to be a psychic medium that can pick on energies and uh, messages and stuff, or can just the general public receive? benefits from it just on on their own do they start channeling messages and receiving information just in the presence of the skulls or how how does that all work well i have seen people come to our presentations where we're showing just slides of different crystal skulls and some of the people have never seen a crystal skull before been exposed to it And the energies around them help to activate for that person their spiritual gifts or to release blockages or emotional blockages or whatever. A person does not have to be a medium or a psychic to have a crystal skull. As a matter of fact, this is part of the purpose, I think, why people are drawn to the crystal skulls is it becomes a tool for them to help them to develop their gifts. Um, I know a lot of times when I've uh, been writing and I have a crystal skull around, it just seems to amplify the clarity of my thoughts so you know it's like what i'm writing it just comes out really really fast and it's very clear what i need to do so i just see the crystal skulls as a tool that can help a person with their creative gifts and their spiritual gifts but of course not everyone has a connection with a crystal skull because in the shape of a skull many of us were brought up and many people in uh, their religious belief that the shape of the skull is death and doom and i think that that is mistaken was a mistake that was done in the past. Maybe some priest, ancient priest, Mayan priest, indigenous priest who saw that the shape of the skull was a power tool. They didn't want people to know that, so they kind of made them afraid of it. But it doesn't make any sense that just this part of our body, our our human bone skull, we should be afraid of or is, is negative. Every aspect of who we are as a being is positive and gifted to us by creator. So the crystal skulls has become an extension To ourselves, uh, many people have names for their skulls because they're having this kind of internal internal dialogue with them through this consciousness that's working through them. And, uh, you know, we keep hearing from people every week about wonderful experiences they're having with their crystal skulls. And um, what, what are the size ranges of the skulls and the costs? Well, you could get a crystal skull that's, um, you know, that's a little tiny one you could wear around your neck, you know, like a bead bead shape. And the largest one that I've heard about, I think, is like over 100 pounds. Some of the modern carvers have carved humongous crystal skulls. I mean, this is like 10 times the size of a human bone skull. So the size actually does not matter as far as receiving a, a positive effect from the crystal skull. It's more of... The, the way that the person works with it, of course, if you become a crystal skull guardian, it's also part of your your task to awaken the crystal and work with it and take it to sacred places. And eventually there might come a point like it, like it happens with us where it becomes a tool that you use in your spiritual work or healing work to help people. So size doesn't matter. As far as price, 
you know, we could be talking about a few dollars to get a very small skull to several thousands of dollars. And then there are some people who claim they have these very old or ancient skulls for sale, where I know I was just writing for the members. We have a, um, a membership on our website. And uh, the first crystal skull I saw, the name is Ami. It's a eight-pound amethyst skull I saw in San Jose in 1983. The business group that became uh, the owners of that were trying to sell that skull for a million dollars. So, you know, it's not really oh, about the price. Goodness. Yeah, I mean, because it's they say it can't be duplicated. So it's really not about money uh, for the skull. It's, you know, it's about what – the way that it can help the person in their spiritual evolution and their normal life. So this is what we think is the basis. And then, of course, the indigenous people, the ones that we find who are willing to speak about the crystal skulls, talk about sacred ceremonies that they've done with it and how working with it has helped the energies of Mother Earth, etc. So um, they're pretty amazing and, you know, I've had so many experience with them and so many stories um, that I'll be involved with them for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Yes, and it, it just seems like the skulls have so many um, benefits that come, that it, ways in which, I should say, beneficial ways in which they help support humanity, but also um, all of creation, really, is what it sounds like. Most definitely. Of course, yes, there is and, a um, UFO, just, UFO connection, too, with the crystal skulls, but that's a whole other story. Well, let's talk about the whole other story. <laughs> okay, well, we have Tell one minute to your about, break, but I'll, I'll get started. See, the, the question we, was with some of these very old crystal skulls that were found because they were done in such an, uh, an incredible way. Like, you know, they're found with these indigenous people who don't have the technology like the modern carvers have today with diamond tip tools and saws to make these skulls where did they come from and uh, some people have felt that uh, they were gifts from the gods which would be the extraterrestrials some of the indigenous people talk about that and then of course uh, like with the Mitchell Hedges skull coming my co-authors of the first book I wrote Mystery of the Crystal Skulls Revealed they were watching holographic images inside of the Mitchell Hedges skull when they activated it with color, light, and sound, showing extraterrestrials and UFO-type crafts. Because I believe the crystal skulls can record visually everything that's happening around them, and if the right frequency is sent to them, they will replay those images. So it's kind of like they could be like the ancient computers. So that was uh, pretty amazing. And then there's two crystal skulls I've seen that look like aliens. One known as ET, which is a human-sized smoky quartz skull, and another one called wind, uh, called Synergy. And that is our cue. We are heading into the last break of our show. Joshua, thank you so much for being with us today, and we will continue on with Crystal Skulls. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today. So you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? 
We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, Join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. Special guest Joshua Shapiro talking all about the crystal skulls. Joshua, right before we went to break, we were talking about the link to UFOs. I'm just kind of curious too how the obviously the story was um, has so much interest that they actually made a movie, an Indiana Jones movie uh, around it. And uh, just curious if you had any insight on. You know, what Hollywood portrayed, I know it was tied to the UFOs and what Indiana Jones did. But just if you have any, you know, knowledge on that and then also that the – it's believed that the um, Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull might be from Lost Atlantis, yes? Yes. Uh, going to the Indiana Jones film, obviously they used a plastic skull for the main crystal skull they used. And the reason for that is because they were throwing it around – and like, for example, our skull portal to lose is 10 pounds. I can only throw him maybe <laughs> one or two feet above me and that's it. Sure. I could never throw him at another person. Um, they also talked about a uh, kind of um, magnet, magnetic field around the crystal skull they, they showed. And it's really it's an electromagnetic field that the crystal skulls emanate. So uh, they did mention a few things in the movie that were correct. They did mention the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull, for example. Mm -hmm. But really the display of how the skull uh, was used and what they were doing with it, it was for Hollywood. Sure, sure. But the key of it was is after the movie came out, like when I was going through uh, flying around, a lot more people uh, were asking me about crystal skulls. They became aware of it. So I am grateful uh, to the people who made the movie for giving it a greater awareness that these crystal skulls do exist. Now, as far as Mitchell Hedges coming from Atlantis, part of this comes from my soul memory related to this crystal skull. I'm absolutely positive that I had a past, past lifetime or lifetimes with that crystal skull. One of the proofs that I have of it is the first time I saw it in Dallas, Texas in 1986 – when Anna Mitchell Hedges was alive, she was the prior guardian of the skull. She passed away in 2008. That's when Mr. Uh, Holman inherited the skull. He was her best friend. She was staying with him at the end of his, at her life. Mm. She asked me one time to watch the skull for her while she went off to her hotel room. And I thought that was kind of like the, the spirit of the skull. I, I think it's got a feminine presence to it. Uh, recognized me as an old friend, as a guardian for the skull. So it's been the one that has inspired me the most. And I think I have memories of it being in the temples of Atlantis. Uh, there's also a, a woman who is a spiritual medium, Carol Wilson Davies, who channeled a book called The Skull Speaks, which Anna Mitchell Hedges supported. And in there, it said that this consciousness that was speaking through her when she was in the presence of the skull was um, different uh, individuals who were alive in Atlantis that programmed their consciousness into the skull and said the crystal skull came from the great crystal of Atlantis. So I, I have a very strong feeling of Atlantean energies around it. So mm -hmm. again, the key is with the tour coming up, especially for the people that are in uh, Washington or Oregon on the, on the West Coast, they're going to have their own opportunity during the presentations to be around that skull for two hours in the energy field of it, as well as they'll be able to stand in front of it 
as to have their own experience plus whatever energy this this crystal skull is going to impart to their personal gemstones that will be around it. So they'll be able to determine for themselves, you know, what it is. But I know that when we started to let people know that we were helping to bring Mr. Holman here to the area, we got a lot of people writing to us from all over the world asking if he would be going to their area. So this is an experience with, I think, the most magical crystal skull that exists on the planet that we know about so far. This doesn't include the blue skull that I've had visions of. That really, you know, the the thing I'm excited about is the people who are going to be in their presence. This is going to be a life-changing event. This is something that is going to help them in, in ways that it would take days to describe. That's that's how special this crystal skull is. Wow. And, you know, for Katrina and I to be able to help Mr. Holman to share it, it's a great honor for us. And we're, we're thrilled by it. So that's the reason why I think the, the skull is linked to uh, uh, Atlantis. Also, the co-author of my first book, Sandra Bowen, who just told us she's also going to be present during this. She lives in the uh, northern part of California. When she was doing research with uh, our other co-author, Mr. Nasserino, which I believe was back in like 1985 or so, when she was in the presence of the crystal skull, she got the sensing that the skull and there was an entire crystal body was linked to a specific priestess in Atlantis whose name she gave Shatritra. So um, we shared that in in that book that we wrote, which of course it's out of print Um the books, the only books that we have available are our travelogue series, which talks about two trips to Mexico and the search for the blue skull in, in Peru. Interesting. And also, we have a big following of inspired listeners up in Canada. So if you are up in Canada listening, uh, the tour is going to be coming to Bellingham on July 2nd, just right across the border there from uh, our friends up in Canada. So again, just to recap on the tour dates, it's going to be up in Arlington June 24th through the 25th. July 26th and July 1st in Tacoma, July 28th in Bellevue, July 29th in Marysville, June 30th in Everett, July 2nd up in Bellingham, and July 3rd here in Seattle. Is that going to be the Seattle date? Is that at the East West Bookshop then? I take yes, it? it is. And okay. July 1st date in Tacoma was canceled. So it's just June 26th in Tacoma at Crystal Voyage. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm going to try to make the come out because I've never had that experience of sitting – uh, in the in the power of the uh, the crystal skull, so I'd love to do that. If you want to learn more about the tour, you can head over to uh, www.cse that's crystalskullexplorers.com forward slash Mitchell Hedges tour, or you can email Joshua at crystalskullexplorers at gmail dot com. I'm just curious. The question I have, I, I have a big science background, very analytical, Joshua. And, and the questions I would have, have the skulls ever been tested? You, we talked about the energy fields. Has has scientists request to do tests on them to do, um, you know, maybe how old some of these crystal skulls are and just see what the magnetic fields do? I'm just curious what the science is uh, of people trying to test what's going on with these uh, these crystal skulls. Most of the experiments that have been done with the crystal skulls have been done by crystal skull researchers who may not be considered to be scientists. Mm. So what scientists normally do then is they say, you're not a scientist, so we don't have to pay attention to any information that you have about this. They're just rocks. Um, I've actually worked with and done tests with various electronic devices to measure the frequency of energy that is affecting people. The device that I found the most effective is called a meridian stress test system. It's a device that's also used by medical practitioners or holistic practitioners uh, in the United States and in Europe. And the reason why this is so powerful is it measures the meridian energies in the body and your body is not going to lie what's going on inside of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's able to, knowing what those frequencies are, it provides uh, suggestions of cures. Uh, things that people can take, you know, holistic remedies or supplements, etc. How we used it with the crystal skull is it has a plate where you put the substance that you want to test the person against 
to see how they're going to respond energetically. And so we put the crystal skull on there. Of course, we had to blindfold people because we were testing them with several things. Um, like the Mitchell Hedges is clear quartz. So we would have a piece of clear quartz crystal. We would test a person and with nothing, which is called baseline. And what we saw is that when the crystal skulls get introduced, the energy for the person just greatly expanded. If there were, let's say, chakras that were out of balance or organs mm -hmm. out of balance or or body systems out of balance, the crystal skull would start balancing those frequencies for people. So it was really remarkable, and it was consistent. And we even tested a group of healers in Holland. I think there were like 15 healers, and only one of them was so high with their healing energy that the skull didn't affect them. But the other healers, they were able to enhance their frequency and pretty much put all the healers in total balance. So it was very fascinating doing these tests. Yeah, and I and I work a lot with crystals and energy, and I know of the uh, the crystal caves down in Mexico. You know, you can only go in for so long, and then you have to get out because it does have an impact on our system. Yes. I'm also, you know, it was fascinating. You said some of the the skulls are so old that the tools of that time uh, wouldn't reflect the you know, the equipment that we have today. So it, it makes you wonder how some of these crystal skulls were actually uh, carved out and designed and polished. Um, you want to talk about that just real quick? Well, I think what you have to – what the crystal skulls do, these ancient skulls, is they are physical proof and evidence that there have existed advanced civilizations in the past like Atlantis or Lemuria mm -hmm. that had advanced technologies we may not even have. They used lasers. They used the power of their mind. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why I don't think uh, it's so easy to duplicate some of those skulls. Definitely not the energy that they can – can contain because there was a show I was on where they tried to duplicate the Mitchell Hedges skull and they came mm -hmm. pretty close in form, but that skull had no energy whatsoever. Mm, interesting. So it falls in line with the uh, Easter Island, the pyramid, a lot of stuff that was created, you know, at the time that they still don't know exactly how they did it. So very interesting. Indeed. So again, if you want to uh, celebrate the Crystal Skull World Day, that's November 20th. Uh, 2016. It's a special meditation held at four different time periods. You can also go to uh, www.crystalskullworldday.com. I know you're supporting that and you have your meditation for world peace that you're doing on the 13th at the 13th hour and uh, just would have uh, folks go out to check out the site. Um, that's the cue for the music to end the show. Joshua, thank you so much for being our special guest today. Fascinating subject on the crystal skulls. Always a pleasure. Thank Happy. You, Very welcome. And next week's guest is Diana Lynn, and we're going to be talking all about space clearing. So until next Wednesday, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste. Namaste.